Welcome, welcome everyone to Dual Art Duels. The art is silent because we're bad at it. I'm Bishop. And I'm Walker. And today we have another recommendation. Yay! Soon. The fans. After one of my favorite episodes we've done so far, we're going to do Avatars that you've never heard of again, part two, Ladies' Night edition. So. Ladies' Night! <laughs> Walker, you're going to be going first. Okay, okay. You did Brock last time. I did Brock the Boulder Johnson. Dwayne Brock the Boulder Johnson. And I loved him dearly, but I want to get opposite energy of cool stone guy. We have Korra, Waterbender. Right. Kiyoshi, Earthbender. Avatar Lakshmi, I think, who is an airbender. I want to see a Lady Firebender avatar. Ooh, okay, okay. Certainly now, down for some firebending. What era are we thinking? Because what we have um, future era with Brock, and then we had middle era with Ted. So I'm thinking you should go like early era, right after Avatar One. Like we're still in the medieval, getting the nations together kind of stuff. Right. So this would have been. The, like, fourth one after one, or the third one after one? Because he was, I, like, Firebenders, technically, to start with. He, yeah, so let's say this is the second Firebender. So we're talking, like, early Fire Lords. Ooh, I think I can do that. This would have been yeah, Avatar. Yeah, does one count as a Firebender? Did he I come from he, the Fire Nation? He can't... It's not the Fire Nation, but his well, village... Well, like the Fire Turtle... Yeah, no, he came from the Fire Turtle Village. <laughs> yeah, so that means the fourth Avatar would have been a, a Firebender. Mm-hmm. Or the, the fifth Avatar would have been a Firebender. Or, yeah, fifth, right. Uh, the fourth one after one. And I think... What do you think would be, like, a good name for her? Like, uh, Avatar Padma? <laughs> like like Padme? <laughs> I was thinking more like Padma Lakshmi, but, you know, yeah, let's go, let's go with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, Avatar Amidala. <laughs> Avatar Omadala, I dig it. <laughs> and since she was Fire Nation, probably gonna give her the flaming ponytail look. Dig that. I think it looks neat. But I had an idea while we were discussing this episode, because we do discuss these things beforehand. We, we like to discuss things with one another to make sure we know, you know, what's on the docket, what what cool stuff we have planned for one another. And I think she would have been a fun one to, like, be the one to start up the lightning bending. Ooh, the first lightning bending? Or bender? Yeah. Well, lightning bending's already super rare by the time um, Aang comes around. But it's well known enough that firebenders know how to redirect lightning. Well, Iroh invented that technique. But oh, I think... okay, so... But I'm going by the theme of, like, historically, there's always stuff that gets lost to time. So, like, maybe True. this was a technique she figured out and nobody else could figure out in her time. What if she was, like, the inventor of Greek fire for this universe? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> the early kingdoms knew how to shoot lightning, and then we fucked up and lost it somehow. <laughs> exactly. So then nice. they bring it back, and boom, industrial revolution. Well, I guess that was a mix of lightning bending and metal bending yeah something like that uh, so I'm trying to remember like what Juan had because he was kind of just like traveling monk the entire time yeah, you think they would have had the like Japanese influences yet or are they still kind of running around in like loose clothing with spears and stuff I think it still would have been like very typically Chinese in appearance you know it's, it's all it's all based on you know that sort of central North Asian look um, yeah, because, well, like, um, some of them are based on certain dynasties and uh, on top of being, like, certain local regions. Um, but I know, <laughs> basically, the, the Fire Nation is like an am amalgamation of all of the um, imperial dynasties that were uh, really war-heavy. And then Japan also, because you can't spell... Eastern imperialism without Japan. Which is a little weird because, I mean, Japan didn't really empire itself until after the Sengoku period, I don't think. 
Um, yeah, there was a lot of Japan warring with itself, occasionally sending a fleet to go bother Korea. That was uh, post Sin Goku Jedi. Uh, that was that was during that was the later portion of the Sin Goku Jedi period, I think. Um, Hideyoshi Toyotomi sent that fleet over, and things were okay at first. Then Admiral Yi came along for Korea and just wrecked. That's the dude that was like he fought so hard that he died in the middle of fighting, and people. <laughs> Or That's like... the dude that fought so well that the Korean officials who were in charge of him were like, no, he's too good. Demote him. Okay. And then yeah. put someone else in charge and then watch them fail and then like then scramble to get him back. Because I know there was there was like someone who died in the middle of the battle and they didn't want to demoralize he, he... everyone. That, that so was they kind of like propped up his body and <laughs> acted like he was still giving orders. That was him too. That was his final battle. And it was actually okay. his son who uh, propped him up, like, still in his armor, and then was, like, giving orders. Yeah, that was, a uh, That's badass. <laughs> oh, yeah, Admiral Yi is, like, the definition of badass. I, th- I think he's, one like, of one the greatest of the, um, naval commanders of all time. Yeah, he's one of those, uh, super units you can get in Civ. I don't remember which one, but I don't ever... Probably a boat, because like... he also... I think he... I don't know if he, like, just perfected the turtle ship design, or if he brought it out, or what, but... I know he had something to do with the turtle ships. Yeah, I just know um, the Korea Navy was super good at the time. Yeah, because was of able him. to beat off both China and Japan at the same time. It's just impressive. Yep. But also, okay, so I've got like some of our armor pieces there, which I know are not very like typical Chinese, but I have not studied Chinese armor, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. um unfortunately, there's not like a a lot of really popular. Uh, Western market like Chinese fantasy or um, Chinese historical stuff so it's not really uh, as mainstream as like full and half plate shit well I mean that's true but I also like I own some really fun Chinese action movies where that's a thing (laughs) yeah uh, most of my historical Chinese knowledge comes from like Soul Calibur (laughs) and mine mine from Dynasty Warriors so we're in good hands (laughs) Um, oh, War of the Roses <laughs> slash, th- what is it? Um, it's Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Yes. Uh, I have a movie called Red Cliff by John Wu, which is one of those battles done fully live action. It's awesome. I think it's like one of the most expensive movies China has ever made. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely. It was on Netflix for a little bit, um, but only like an edited down one movie theatrical cut version uh, Honest... but, but it was a, but it was like a duology of movies it has some of like the coolest battles yeah crouching tiger hidden dragon didn't have a ton of arm no a lot of the um i can't remember what that specific style of movie is i don't think it's wushu but it's something similar like where they they have a bunch of like wire battles and stuff yeah. they usually go for like loose garments because it looks a lot better in like fluid motion that's true, it does. Um, like some more... I'm gonna add some, like, flame effects on her pants. I think <laughs> she would be, like, still be loyal to her fire new, fiery roots. That gives her ten more horsepower as soon as you add the flames. Yes, it does. <laughs> Alright, I think that is Avatar Padma. I'm probably gonna add some more details in post, but I think for now, that is gonna be Avatar Padma. You got the intimidating pose, the lightning, the bad haircut that just screams Fire Nation. Yeah! <laughs> All right. So, that's me. And now, I think, Bishop, we're on to you. And I have a, a cool one in mind that I think you'll really like. Crunch ties me, Captain. All right. Bishop, the avatar I would like you to draw is the Storm Avatar. She was an Avatar who born to the Air Nomad Nation, but during like a period of a lot of like typhoons, hurricanes, that kind of really turbulent weather, and she learned how to like really harness it. Okay. So I'm so I'm thinking, you know, she's got like the wind power basic, but like incorporate like some some waterness into there too and 
I'm thinking also maybe a little bit of lightning because you know storm avatar or just like the swirling thing. What I'm thinking, I'm thinking swirls because storm. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing storm, it's probably going to be a lot of like cartwheely arm type motions. Um, oh man, my limited knowledge of martial arts fails me. I'm trying to think of like what a good pose would be that isn't just like a tai chi thing. Um, Honestly, a good pose to go through for this, I think, would be Goku's pose when he first fought Vegeta. Like the the Saiyan crouch saga. down kind the of thing? Crouch down with, like, the fists. Uh, like, half clench. I'm trying to... Um, hey, if you I got a reference do, picket, like, go ahead. Uh, I want to do, like, in motion, though. I'm trying okay. to think. Head starting here. Remember our our bean lesson. <laughs> the the bean lesson, which I was like, I, I already do this, man. I don't I don't know what you're trying to teach me here. <laughs> I I sure don't. So um, already that's not what I was intending. I think you're doing. I think you're doing all right. All right. Um. Yeah, I like this 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 S you got going on here. Yeah. So I'm. Wow, this is hard to imagine martial arts poses without a reference. <laughs> that's that's why that's like half the things I practice. Uh, just just so I can nail these poses down. Because I wanted to do like a um, standing arm out. This arm tucked in kind of like that. That way it was more like Oh, okay. Going. Do you, do, do you see what I'm imagining? I see what you're imagining. <laughs> okay. Um All right. Like I'm not I'm not crazy. I know what I'm doing. Ah. No, no, I get I I I see what you are going for. Yeah, so let's just completely erase this one. Oh, yeah, no, I think eraser. I I think I just the way you and I like sort of put things together in our minds is different, which not not really surprising. Like I've been trying, I've been figuring out some, some things about my own like mental faculties and stuff. But I, I almost imagine like a three D place, and I cannot imagine still images for the life of me. But I can hold like motion in my head. Yeah, um, I recently learned that I cannot see images. Like, I do not have a uh, a mind's eye thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I can describe to you an apple, but if you were like, imagine an apple in your head, I would just think of the concepts of right. an apple. I could not see the apple, which is very frustrating. So drawing without, like, a reference is actually hella hard. Um, and, and I can't... Like, I can... I can see that apple. I can see it pretty clearly, but only for like a split second. Um, if I add like a time lapse to it, I can kind of see it a little more, but I can't really focus on the apple because everything on the apple is changed. Brains are weird. <laughs> Brains are weird, folks. They sure care are. For, care for your brain because it won't care for you um, ever. Okay, so I know I'm missing like some hips here, which is why the the legs are awkward <laughs> that's also why I never do what Ethan Becker does um, when he says to like never use ovals like no I'm going to use these ovals because these are helping me like piece together things yeah like um, I try not to do ovals uh, I think the lemon thing does help mm. but like when we're, we're doing these and I'm trying to put like a limit on how long I take sketching um then I, I kind of just impression it, and the uh, the ovals help with that a little bit. Right. So what are, what are you imagining for this this storm avatar? So I'm thinking like this specific pose mm -hmm. is the last and like a multi step kind of dance. Right. So uh, if you remember the dragon episode, I do. They did the fancy little dance to connect to fire. Well, I mean, spoilers, dragons in Asian mythology are less spoilers than it is uh, 
history lesson, kids. Um, dragons in Asian mythology are actually water creatures and not fire creatures. Because so, they're based on rivers. Yeah. So it would make a lot of sense to do a bunch of like fluid kind of snake motions followed by like a hard stop as um, kind of like a push for wind or water. And a storm, of course, is a mixture of uh, heavy um, gale force winds and water. So I actually kind of want to put her in um, not the Tibetan kind of shaolin monk clothing. Mm -hmm. I think um, one of those, I don't remember what they're called, but it ma it man wears one. Oh, um, yes, I know what you're talking about. No, I don't remember what it's called. I want to say it starts with like either a, a Q or a G, and that's not helpful. Um, but it's basically like a a turtleneck trench coat jacket that's lightweight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that. Uh, I will have already put several references of what I'm talking about on the screen, but you and I will have to stay confused, Walker. Yes, yes we will, because even as I Google the answer, all I'm getting is Kung Fu uniform. <laughs> that feels racist. <laughs> well, it is mostly white people in these outfits, thank you, Google Images. Oof. <laughs> okay, so what... What era are we thinking? Is yeah, this... I'm, I'm still thinking like early era, unless you want to do, and this is up to you, a modern day version. Well, what would come after Earth? I don't remember the Avatar words. I, think... I remember, I remember, fi... oh no, because water comes after air. Air, yeah, so... So then... Earth comes after, uh, after water. water. And then that would leave Fire. <laughs> So she would have to come after the fire person. God knows what that would be, because that's technically past our future, unless the fire avatar died super young. Um, oof. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to go future. I'm uh, thinking... Not future, but like modern day. Like she's wearing some Under Armour or whatever. <laughs> um, I think I want to say... And this is how she and she lives in Florida, fighting off hurricanes. <laughs> I want to stay um a bit older with it, so we'll we'll stick to continuity. ancient Florida. Ancient Florida? No, that's the swamp benders. <laughs> no, that's true. That's very true. My question is: Does she have the arrow and the bad haircut? It's either bad haircut or no haircut. <laughs> I feel like you're allowed to have good hair. <laughs> you don't. You don't have to have the. the I mean, this this could have been before the, the formation of the Air Nomad, because there's nothing to say that even though the the kingdoms were divided, the actual like cultural solidification might not have necessarily happened, or maybe there was a time before like the four kingdoms were actually separate. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just trying to I don't know like I think I'm just trying to throw him like more into the avatar world than you see yeah I think the limit of my westerner perspective is limiting how I can think of ugh, I, I want to do flowy hair but I can't think of like a haircut that's that's my problem um, because oh, I don't, just, I don't want to just do like the you don't, high. What about your crush's hair? Uh, like that, but then I don't want to do just loose what? flowing in the wind nonsense. Because then it'll just be a big old dark blob in the background. You don't want to do your crush's hair, your white, your wide-eyed crush's hair. Uh, I can't make everything Hinata. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, what about, like, something a little more, like, shocky? doesn't necessarily have to be realistic, but maybe a little something wilder, since I did call her the Storm Avatar. Wilder? Like a... Like a janky pixie cut or something? Janky pixie cut. 
janky medium cut, whatever, like something wild. I don't know, like like jet or something. Like it doesn't. The gravity doesn't have to have like a super high impact on her hair just because she's a. True, but I I want the hair to be longer mostly so I can show the impact of the wind because I'm going to have the storm coming in from behind her. What about um, the really weird anime hair of multiple ponytails? Multiple (laughs) ponytails? I don't know. I didn't think of it before. Chung Lee buns and pigtails. There you go. You have vaguely Asian... And I still get to have longer hair. There you go. This is the uh, the Tintin. There's always a way to bring joy. I'm trying to think back to... There's some anime girl I remember from... I have no idea how many years ago at this point. But I swear she had like four ponytails. And they were long ponytails. So it's not, it's not Tamari's four ponytails. It was like some other girl. I think she had lavender hair. Just crazy stupid long four ponytails. A double pigtail. I don't remember anything more than that. There you go. There she is, like, on the cliffside, facing down the storm. The true oh, power. yeah, no, this is this is done. So. Yeah, the true power of, of, of the storm avatar, whose name will be mentioned later. <laughs> we'll mention it now, we need a name, it's the last thing. <laughs> Oh, oh, I have to come up with names for both of them now? Okay, fine. Um, 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 Avatar, um, where's the drugs? Avatar. Didn't I name both of them last time? So this is definitely on you. No, I <laughs> named Avatar Ted. Did you name Ted? I, I thought named I, Ted. I, I, I no. thought I sarcastically said Ted, and you're mm-hmm. like, you're doing a Ted now. <laughs> no, I said Ted because Avatar Ted's been in my head for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, 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 this is Avatar Lima. Avatar Lima. Lima. Oh, I like that. Avatar Lima. Lima. L-I-M-A. Yeah, Avatar Ted has been in my head for a while. Somebody did some, like, Avatar narration challenge on TikTok. So I did that at Mirror's Two Eyes at TikTok. <laughs> and <laughs> it was, like, introducing the new Avatar or whatever. And I said, I am Avatar Ted. Oh my gosh. Okay. So here's the storm avatar with her chungly hair. Avatar Lima. Woo! Facing down the storm. <laughs> Being the avatar that no one avatar was before. Probably Theme avatar music like pending. 30 or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for joining us for another wonderful episode of Dual Art Duels. Please check out our hashtag Dueling Arts. D-U-E-L-I-N-G. Dueling art. My bad. I'm sorry. Art. We're no dueling S. Art. <laughs> dueling art. No S. Because that's fencing, apparently. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's let's go curse them and piss off the sword people. <laughs> that's a good idea. Um, yeah, dueling art. Hashtags at Instagram, on Twitter, all the fun places. We are on Twitter at Dual Art Duels. We are on Instagram at Dual Art Duels. And that is D U A L A R T D U E L S. Because we're annoying that way. <laughs> Thank you again, uh, everybody. Have a good night. Love and respect. Hate and peace. <laughs> and her name is Toph Bayfall. <laughs>